Hello, wonderful, strong humans, and welcome to my page. Thanks for joining me today. We are going to talk about and learn how to do exercises that are great for your quads. The quads are the big muscles that are on the front of the legs. So we're gonna be going through five kettlebell exercises. You could do some of them with dumbbells or body weight, and then a bonus body weight thigh burner for the end. All of these exercises can be strung together for a complete workout and I'll let you know the sets and reps along the way. But the purpose of this video is really to teach you how to do the exercises and then you can take your knowledge into your workout on your own. So let's get going. A quad workout is going to be very knee dominant. That means you're gonna be bending the knees. Of course, the hips bend as well, but our knees are gonna get a lot of wear and tear through this workout. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you warm up your knees. And if you're not into warm ups, I mean, I don't really get you, but you could just fast forward to the part where we start the actual strength exercises. But if you're with me for happy and healthy knees, let's just pop down to the floor. The very first thing you're going to do is get your feet a little farther away than underneath those knees, lie down, and we're going to do some glute bridges where we're up on our toes. Now this is a little different than normal, but it's getting a co-contraction, meaning a contraction of both the front and the back of the thigh, which is starting to just strengthen those knees. So we're coming up on our tiptoes here. And if this is too hard, you could put your feet up on a foam roller or box something and keep those toes on the floor. So you're gonna do this about 10 times, squeezing the core and making sure that you park the lower back on the floor with each rep. So after about 10 of those, you can stand up and we're gonna go on to what I affectionately call the stripper squats because you're up on your tiptoes. So come up to your tiptoes and grab onto a door frame, lean on a wall, or if you're in a gym, just grab onto a piece of equipment and you wanna have those hands at about hip height. Now holding onto the wall, come up on those tiptoes and then squat down, shooting your knees forward. Now you see I'm staying really upright. The purpose of the wall here is to help me stay upright as I'm going up and down on my tiptoes. Really shooting those knees forward, trying to take a pretty narrow stance and not letting the knees go out side to side. So you'll do these 10 times as well. You'll really start to feel that knee joint firing right away. And this is, again, the beginning to having really strong knees. The final thing we're going to do is put one foot in front of the other and come down into a split squat. So that means that my feet are not too far apart. I don't wanna be out here in a lunge, but really close enough together where when I sink down, my back knee is in front of the hip. And then I'm gonna stay here, arms out in front. I have a really neutral pelvis, it's tucked and I get as close to the floor as possible, and you're going to hold here for 15 to 30 seconds. And if you want an even bigger challenge, come up onto both tiptoes and sink down and hold, and you're really gonna feel those knees working, the quads are starting to burn, holding again for 15 to 30 seconds on each side. So these split squat holds, isometric holds, a great way of strengthening your knee joint. So go through all three of these exercises your glute bridges on your tiptoes, your tiptoe stripper squats on the wall, and then your um, split squats with an isometric hold twice through, and then let's hit those actual quad dominant exercises. The first and perhaps most obvious quad dominant exercise we're gonna cover is the front squat. Now when you load weight onto the front side of your body, naturally what's on the front is going to work. So that's why a front squat is a great quad dominant exercise. It is also the one that you could probably load the heaviest because it is a bilateral movement. Both of the feet are on the floor. You'll see a lot of the exercises later on are unilateral. So we wanna kind of do this one when we have the most gas in the tank. So if you're going to be putting these exercises all together, start with your front squats. So we're gonna just clean those kettlebells up for a front squat. And now that weight is situated right in front of us. My elbows go straight down, um, knuckles are pointing towards the ceiling, core is engaged, and I'm going to sink down, staying as upright as possible, and the quads are responsible for lowering me down, and the glutes pop me back up. So to make this more of a quad dominant exercise, what you can do is add a tempo and slow down lowering, three, two, one, hold at the bottom, three, 
two, one, and now the glutes are recruited to pop you back up. So the quads got the majority of the work here. Again, we had a tempo, three, two, one, hold at the bottom, three, two, one, <laughs> fire up. So we've got those front squats. Depending on the weight you're working with, if it's a heavier weight, keep those, that rep count light. But if you found a weight that's pretty challenging and you incorporate the tempo, five to eight reps for three or four sets is a great place to start this workout at. Next up, we have a rear foot elevated split squat. So we kind of warmed up that movement pattern with our isometric split squat. Now we're going to take it to having our foot, rear foot elevated on a surface like a bench, chair, ottoman, anything that is a foot or two off the floor. So I have a really lot, much longer in detail tutorial of this linked in the corner if you're interested, but if you already have some familiarity with the movement, this explanation should be great. You're going to start with one foot up on the bench. You wanna have the top of the foot on the bench, so you might need to remove your shoes for this. Then you can kind of come down into what I would call a runner's lunge and get your front ankle underneath the front knee. So this is how you know you actually are set up correctly. One of the big problems people encounter is not setting up correctly and then being off balance. So from here, if you can engage your core and stand up on your own, you'll take your kettlebell and you can either put it on the same side as the elevated foot or on the outside. It's going to hit a slightly different muscle group depending on the way you pick. Great way of varying the exercise as you progress is to move the weight side to side. But we're going to hinge down, grab that weight, stand up, and then finding our balance, lower down using that front knee and stand back up. Here the quad is really working in overdrive. You wanna be light on that back leg and have the front leg doing most of the work. Try to keep the knee going straight over that front foot and sink down here. You're not hinging forward as much. If you hinge forward, this becomes more of a glute dominant exercise. And for today's purpose, we wanna be working the front of the leg, the quad. So think of going straight down. And that's where this weight can actually help you. It functions as something to help sink you straight down. Now, if you have never done the rear foot elevated or Bulgarian split squat before, you can start with no weight. And if you have a hard time getting that back knee all the way to the floor, you can pop a yoga block or a plate or a cushion underneath that knee. And then you have brought your floor a little closer to you, more limited range of motion, but you're able to safely work in here. So don't be afraid if your surface is just a little high for you to bring some height underneath that knee. So now we can do the rear, rear foot elevated split squat for anywhere from six to 12 reps per leg. And I would say three sets is perfect for this exercise. Go higher on the reps if you're going lower on the weight. If even if you're a very experienced lifter and have very strong legs, I promise 12 body weight split squats will fry your legs. Next up, we have a step up. This is where we're going from the floor to an elevated surface. You can use a bench if you have it, or if you're in a gym, use like a box that's a little more stable, or if you're at home, you could use a step stool. <clears throat> I also have a version I'll show you after where we don't use any elevation at all. So for the step up, you're going to start standing in front of your surface, and this is very straightforward. You just step up. Now you can tap the leg that was behind you down for a more, an easier version, or if you want a harder version, you can bring the knee up into a knee jab and really practice balancing on that grounded leg. Now, if you feel comfortable with this, we can add a weight. I take your kettlebell, rack it up into a goblet squat, and now here we're stepping up with that weight in tow. The weight being closer to your center of gravity here is going to be easier than if you were to hold it down by your side and do it like that because that weight is now pulling on you. So easier version up in a goblet position, harder version in a suitcase rack. If you were to have two kettlebells and hold two lighter ones in a suitcase rack, that would be a little bit easier because you would be evenly balanced. So you would wanna do about 10 of these per leg with or without weight. And if you do not have a, a surface to step up available to you, you can actually do these from the floor. Now I would recommend having something like a pad 
to kind of pad your knee that's going to be on the floor here. But we come down into a tall kneeling position. Clean our kettlebell up. And we're doing what I call a dead stop lunge, where we do a lunge from the floor and you're really only using that front leg to pull you up, much like when you were only using your front leg to step up. So here, we step up, we don't use that back leg, and then we come back down. Again, try to untuck the toes, use the front leg to pull yourself up. It's very slow, it feels like you're stepping up onto an elevated surface and come back down. There you go. It is very challenging. You can keep your toes tucked if you need to, and use them to help push yourself up. But try not to plant that foot that was in the back with each rep. You don't wanna plant it when you stand up. And again, 10 reps per leg. Do it with your kettlebell on a goblet rack, or if it's too challenging, drop the weight altogether. Our exercises so far have worked on strength, stability, and balance. Now we're going to add in some quad power with jump squats or kettlebell jump squats. So before you pick up that weight, let's go over the mechanics of a squat. It's very much like a swing or a hinging movement. It's not as up and down with your torso as a normal squat is. And you really need to use your legs to power yourself up. So what it looks like is I bend my legs and shoot my arms behind me as I hinge my body forward. Think you kind of want to make sure you're not going to fall over here. And then as I jump, I throw my arms up into extension and reach for the ceiling. You always want to think when you're jumping of reaching or throwing something, like you're throwing a basketball, right? We want to be reaching for the ceiling. The point of jumping is vertical height. We're going up, so we don't want to go up with our arms down like this. A lot of the time we'll see people doing jump squats like they're trying to shoot laser beams out of their hands and elevate up, but you want to be reaching up. So again, we hinge, throw the arms back, throw them up as we jump and land with a soft knee bend. So if you have not done too much jumping, today, just do your body weight jump squats, very big quad burner, we're gonna do 10 of them. But if you have already been doing jump squats or box jumps, we are going to upgrade this with a kettlebell. So you're gonna take a lightweight kettlebell and place it right in between your feet. We hinge down, this time the arms are not involved obviously because they're holding the kettlebell. You grab onto that kettlebell in a suitcase position. Now you can kind of think of being a pogo, you're shooting your knees out, maybe to the sides a little bit. You can take more of a sumo stance here. And you're gonna hinge down, reaching the chest forward and the hips back a little bit for extra boing in this pogo. And then shoot yourself up, landing straight down with that kettlebell. Again, that kettlebell sinks. Inhale down, exhale as you jump up. And this, I mean, my thighs are on fire already. You're really thinking of going up as high as you can and landing as softly as you can. Just straight through back and forth, 10 reps here. It will have your legs toasted. And you wanna do, again, three rounds of this. You could superset this power exercise with one of the earlier strength exercises. A favorite superset of mine is a front squat with a jump squat immediately after. And if you want a little active rest, throw in a minute of a core exercise, but otherwise you can keep going in order and do this on its own. As you can tell from how out of breath I am, it is obviously very tiring, so there's nothing wrong with doing it in its own right. Take 30 to 60 seconds of rest before you go on to the next round. This is one of those exercises you might wanna time your rest, because if not, you could accidentally let too much time go by because it does feel like you need a lot of recovery, but we kept that light, weight light so you don't have to wait that long. Next, we have a front foot elevated isometric split squat. I know that's a mouthful. We elevated the back leg and made the front leg work very dominantly. Now we're going to elevate the front leg, still making it work as the dominant leg, but we are going to be holding our weight and not moving. <clears throat> so first, without weight, what this looks like, so you're going to put your front leg on something like a yoga block. If you have much bigger feet than me, I would suggest maybe a plate if you're in the gym, something like a step stool, a book, something to get that foot up a little bit. Hell, you could even fold up your yoga mat a bunch of times and just have a you know, little inch or two cushion there. Some elevation is what we're looking for, not a ton. So then you're going to come 
on the tiptoes of the back leg and once again we are going to sink down something i like to suggest doing is coming all the way to the floor so you can see really how far away from the floor you are now and then come up just a little bit and you're going to hold you want to be pressing into that front leg that front thigh is working and the back thigh is working as well to stabilize that knee but you really want to feel this in the front leg you're also going to feel it in the front glute so you're going to hold here the closer to the floor you are the harder it is you come up anywhere you need to be but if you can get close to the floor and this feels like something that is within the realm of reason for you we are going to rack our kettlebell up into the goblet position again and then elevate off the floor and again hold here you're going to feel your legs shaking like crazy you want to have your pelvis tucked head shoulders and hips stacked in a nice tall straight line and hold everything is going to burn start with 15 seconds per side on this for three sets and then work your way up in five second incre in five second increments to 20 25 30 seconds once you hit about 30 seconds you could start making these active and going up and down but the isometric is going to be amazing for building quad and knee strength so we have one more exercise now it is a kneeling sissy squat this one i would say stick to body weight especially if you've never done them before and get a cushion or you know one of these foam mats to kneel on because you really want to make sure that your knees are protected here so we're going to come to a kneeling position and this is kind of a bonus if you've done this whole workout now and you're like hell no i can't feel my legs that's fine this is just a great quad exercise to throw in at the end of any leg day so you're going to kneel up on your surface untuck your toes and get your knees pretty close together now we're going to engage our glutes squeeze your butt for dear life that's very important here squeeze your core and this whole time you do this exercise you want to be aware that your head ears shoulders hips and knees remain in a straight line if they don't stay straight you're not going to be doing this right now you can either hold your arms out in front of you or cross them over your chest i'm going to hold them out here in hopes that i don't block the mic and then you lean back as far as you can with control and then come back up it's the coming back up in this case that's going to be the incredible quad killer so you're squeezing your glutes squeezing your glutes lowering back as far as you can squeeze and come back up having your knees up is going to make this a little easier than if you're on a very low cushiony surface like a gym floor and if you need a little extra help you can tuck your toes and that's going to just help give you a little assist to push you back up so core is engaged again my hips are nice and straight what i want to avoid having happen is this that's a really big exaggeration but even this your hips don't want to bend at all they want to stay super straight so start with five reps of this work your way up to 10 two rounds as a burner is plenty you if you feel and bad pulling in the kneecap abandoned ship you're not here yet but if you are i hope that this was a really great quad day and if you're still with me make sure to check out my new she beast program well it's not new but we're starting another round of it she beast is my signature 12 week kettlebell and body weight program where we learn every single kettlebell exercise that you need to know and master all the body weight stuff as you saw today i talked a lot about you can do this with a kettlebell and you can do it with body weight and depending on where you are in your fitness journey those exercises with body weight will leave you quaking in your shoes so we want to make sure that we really build a strong foundation with body weight the she beast program does that it is open to women of all fitness levels i have absolute beginners through other trainers in there and over those 12 weeks you learn everything you need to know about kettlebells and body weight so if you want to be a part of that please sign up with the link below you can also reach out to me on instagram at emma Benoli to learn more about the program we can chat we start july 18th so sign up asap i cannot wait to see you there